Welcome to Supermani. I am going to talk to you about some of the alternatives that uh, debt investors have. Uh, when I mean debt investors, I mean that portion of your money which is invested in debt. Uh, all of us have an investment appetite for equity and an investment appetite for debt and largely the debt appetite is met by people by going into bank fixed deposits largely bank fixed deposit and post office deposits in india is really huge much bigger than the fixed uh, much bigger than the mutual fund industry uh, and what are the alternatives why do people go for bank deposits simply because they have certainty they know when they have to keep the money, they know when they will get it back, they know what is the rate of interest and they know that in between if they need liquidity, it can be broken. So it's a very well known product which your great grandfather, grandfather, father, everybody invested. So uh, everybody knows that product and everybody sticks to that. Now what are the alternatives which are available? One is you get the RBI floating rate bond. And like the name says, the rate floats. So there is some uncertainty with the next six months whether the interest will be higher or lower. Uh, then there is uh, the uh, tax-free bonds which are available. Then there is PPF up to a limited uh, amount of one and a half to three lakh, four and a half lakhs, which you can put in two, three names in your house, uh, whether you get the tax break or no. And then there is uh, the uh, uh, Nippon India has something called a Nivesh Laksha. Uh, which is a deep, uh, which is a long GSEC uh, bond fund <laughs> and uh, as I said, it's a fund, it's not just a single product. So it is a, it is a fund which invests in GSECs and AAA. So the chances of uh, losing money due to credit risk there is very close to zero. Having said that, wh what do people look for in a, in a bond investment? They look for certainty, they look for uh, uh, zero risk, they want the principal back exactly as it was and a rate of interest which is predictable. Now you can't get all this in the product which uh, except a bank fixed deposit and the bank fixed deposit has a huge disadvantage that you don't get a positive real return. If you take inflation into account and taxation into account, <coughs> banks give you a negative real return. So it's not an attractive way to invest except a small portion which you need for liquidity that you're not really looking for being very, um, uh, it's not an investment product, it's a saving product kept there for liquidity. The tax-free bond which you buy is also got risk simply because because interest rates have gone down uh, after the bonds were issued. So these bonds are quoting at a premium. So when you go for redemption, they will uh, you will definitely lose money. <coughs> that brings us all back to something called uh, NLF Nivesh. I'll continue to call it NLF of uh, Nippon. <clears throat> which is a product which has got to, which is 23 years to maturity and it has got very little if any uh, credit risk i would think it does not have any credit risk at all the advantage is for anybody above 37 years of age this is a very good way to defer your tax <clears throat> you remember i said that bank fixed deposits are inefficient because of the taxation in nlf what you can do is put the money maybe you're 37 38 years of age and you start putting your money now uh, as an sip or as a lump sum right now it is being uh, given to hni clients for tax deferral and for estate planning etc so big lump sums are coming into it uh, many people I know have put lump sums into it. I am suggesting beyond going beyond that. You can also put a uh, SIP into it. I have done an SIP into it, maybe a small amount. <coughs> so whether you are putting 5000 rupees or 10,000 rupees or 15,000 rupees, whatever is your appetite for debt, that is what you should be putting into it. And whenever there is an interest rate change, let's say today the interest rate for a, a 10 year GSEC is 7.6%. If you think that it won't go up further, you can put money. But what happens is interest rates uh, fluctuate, interest rates change, then India gets into the MSCI index and interest rates can go down. All these things happen. Interest rates are as volatile as equity markets, if not more, right? So you start doing an SIP into it for whatever amount that you can afford, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000. And and whenever you think oh interest rates have moved up uh, very well uh, go and put a lump sum so i do that i do a small sip and whenever i have a lump sum i put money into that and i've got a very very good return i'm not mentioning the return because i don't want to raise expectation and uh, it's just not right to raise that kind of expectation but i've done well over the last six eight months because interest rates have gone up Right, so even spite of the fact that interest rates have gone up simply because I've stayed on in the fund for more than five years, I still have got a good return and the lump sums have happened very late. 
so whenever the lump sum has happened i have benefited by the interest rate movement right so you could also do that when because when this fund was started a few years ago the interest rates were higher so they have had that lock in and more importantly <laughs> every quarter or every six months whenever they get interest that interest gets uh, logged in at higher in, uh, at higher and higher rates if interest rates are going up so that helps and when interest rates go down your portfolio anyway appreciates right when interest rates go down the profit the the value of your portfolio goes up so both ways if you look at it as a long term fund don't look at it for 6 uh, months or 8 months last 6 8 months you would have got good returns but that does not mean you have to look at it as a short term fund just like equity treat it as a very long term ish uh, thing i mean i i am treating it as next 23 years i am not going to touch it 2045 or something is the uh, date when the fund will uh, close down so i have i have invested thinking i will invest till 2045 I have the liquidity. If I want, I can withdraw from 2042, 43, 44, 45, whatever. If I expect interest rates to change unfavorably, or if I think the amount is too high, so I may start withdrawing earlier. So the advantage is instead of paying tax on the bank in bank uh, fixed deposit on a yearly basis, here I pay tax at the end of another 23 years. So postponing tax over a very long period of time, being able to. Uh, Uh, sit tight not worry about mtm losses i know i'm going to hold it for 23 years right so i don't have to worry about uh, mtm losses which will happen uh, anyway in any bond fund and here it will happen because it's got a long duration so any interest rate change un in uh, against you or unfavorably will make uh, the whole value fall but however like i said since your new money is getting logged in at higher rates you don't have to worry about that too many people think that uh, long term money should only be in equity i'm a very strong believer that long term money should be in equity i still have a debt appetite right so i may be 80% in equity but i may still have a 20% debt appetite and that 20% may be much more than 4 5 lakhs which i can safely put in a pp so beyond ppf what do i do uh, nlf is a good uh, way to invest your uh, money and stay there for longish periods of time treat it like equity withdraw when you think when you're getting if suddenly you see interest rates have gone favorably and you got 17% uh, return it does happen in guild funds by the way that's a great time maybe to withdraw and put it into a uh, less volatile asset class maybe like an ultra short bond fund but you don't need to do that also if you're anyway going to wait till maturity it is likely to give you very good returns so if you take the sip returns in such funds it may not be too great but that is a great way to be accumulating uh, unit because you will never be able to do a lump sum unless you have money it's very unlikely that you sell your shares and put money into this but i have done that what happens is when suppose equity markets are doing well and you withdraw some money and you're wondering where to put it this is a good place to dump all that money because this could serve as your retirement fund also right so you're uh, now 50 years of age or let's say you're even 55 years of age you're going to get this money when you're 78 it does not mean you have to wait till 78 right so at 70 you need money and the fund is doing well it is given you 9% kind of a return simply because of the uh, fact that you logged in at uh, high rates and then interest rates have fallen that's a great time to be removing money from that paying the 10% tax right um, you get indexation benefit so you're much taxation wise you're better off so that is the advantage of looking at this fund